So why is it important to learn about behavioural economics? Well, one of them is, even if you are instinctively the most brilliant creative person uh, the world has ever created, you will still have to sell your ideas to other people. And behavioural economics provides you with a kind of rational and robust vocabulary with which you can describe what you're doing and actually credibly persuade people to adopt things which might at first seem counterintuitive or illogical. And that's really, really important. Most really interesting ideas seem counterintuitive or illogical at first. And having a mechanism by which you can actually make people who are often highly rational and highly risk averse feel comfortable with this mode of thinking is really important. The other, and actually even greater reason for this, is that it will help you generate better ideas. One of the problems of economics is that all problems uh, when looked at through the lens of economics, boil down to effectively bribing people. You either pay people to do something you want them to do, or you fine them for not doing it. Now the problem with that is it's both incredibly expensive to do that in many cases, it's also in some, in, in some instances, it's imaginatively incredibly limiting. Quite often you can get people to do different things just by asking them really nicely, for instance. And so by giving you a much, much deeper and more broad-ranging uh, creative palette with which to design and with, in which to legislate and within which to create programmes and human experiences, you will simply become much better at what you're doing. It also has the magical property that, in many cases, you can suddenly spot problems or obstacles which are obvious to you and which have been baffling other people for tens or tens of years or longer. And so it is a magical new way. What I'm giving you really here is a third eye. We tend to look at the world, we tend to look at human behaviour through what I call the dodgy pair of binoculars. One lens is market research, which assumes that people know exactly why they do things and what they intend to do and can describe their reasons perfectly and accurately. Well, that ain't so. The other lens we tend to look at is the standard economic lens, which is not entirely wrong, but sometimes woefully inefficient unimaginative and occasionally diametrically wrong. If you look at the world through this third lens of, I would say it's, it's a mixture of you know, good evolutionary psychology married to a little bit of economics, what you will suddenly do is you'll realise that there are problems that looked insurmountable that suddenly become easy. You will also find that you can achieve enormous effects and enormous changes uh, in outcome by changing very, very little about an input or a cue. So you can create your own butterfly effects. And it's a license to be oblique. It's a license to actually change people's behaviour, not by always using that kind of head-on incentive-disincentive axis, but by coming at things from a creative and unexpected and counterintuitive angle. So it's inordinately creatively liberating as well. And once you do it, it now, you could spend your entire life studying this subject, I acknowledge that. Actually, the payoff, um, it's a bit like the Atkins diet, the payoff comes remarkably fast. A large part of the payoff comes remarkably and satisfyingly quickly. Once you know about three or four slightly counterintuitive truths around human behaviour and you come to accept them, an inordinate number of the gains of this mode of looking at the world come very quickly. So I don't have to give you too hard a plug uh, for taking up this course because I think within the first few minutes you'll start to notice the gains. And I can really commend it to you and uh, good luck.